Hey y'all, welcome back to Nini's Texas Kitchen. Today, we're gonna make a lemon meringue pie with a short crust pastry for the, the um, pie crust. <clears throat> so, first thing you gotta do is make your pie crust. So what I have here is two cups of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, go ahead and add that. I, got, I need, a, it says a teaspoon, but I'm only, only gonna put half of a teaspoon of salt in it because I'm using salted butter. Then you have your stick of butter and you're gonna cut it into small pieces. So I'm just gonna get a knife, cut it up. And I have my shortening um, in the freezer right now so it'll chill a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut it into pieces like so. Put it in there, I can get hold of it. Just do it like this. Keep getting it in there. So you got all of it cut up and put inside your flour mixture. You just want it in little pieces so it's easier to blend it in with your flour. It doesn't have to be perfectly uniform size pieces or anything like that. Alright, so that's in. Now I'm gonna get my short thing. thing I'm going to do is start mixing all of this together with my flour and I'm going to want to do it till it's all nice and crumbly like so. Once I get it all mixed then I'm going to add in six to seven tablespoons of ice water and a, half, and a teaspoon of vanilla because this is a short crust pastry, um, pie crust instead of a regular pie crust. <clears throat> so it's kind of like making it like a cookie crust sort of, um, or in the UK as they would say, biscuit crust. So it's short crust. Okay. If you put your butter stick in here whole, it's gonna be really hard to chop it all up and make it crumbly to form into your, your crust. And the other trick to these types of crusts, even regular pie crusts, is you add the amount of water that it says, but then you may have to add just a little bit more of cold water than what it calls for to make sure that your dough will stick into, turn into like a ball of dough that you can then roll out. If it's too dry, because you didn't put enough water in it, it's not gonna stick together and form a ball. And so you're not gonna be able to roll it out. And then when you try to pick it up, it's gonna just crumble and fall apart. So you gotta make sure you get enough moisture in it. stuff off like this. Oh, see how it's all crumbly and everything? That's what you want it to look like. A little crumbly. <clears throat> all right. So now I'm going to add my vanilla and then I'm going to add my water and I will use a uh, fork to mix it all together That when I do that. I can get this off. Do it the old fashioned way. Use my teeth. Alright. 
It's a brand new bottle of pure vanilla extract. So I hadn't opened it yet. <laughs> Spoon of vanilla. I'll make that later. Alright. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna get out my fork. I'm gonna get ready. Make a little well in the center here. See how I made a little well, this little hole area for it to pour down into. Like so. I'm gonna go ahead. I saved a little bit of my water. I'm gonna mix it up and see how it does. And if I need to add the rest, I will. It's sticking together pretty good. So I may not need the rest. I can get rid of my piece of ice that's in there. All right. So I probably added about five or so tablespoons, which is enough. I don't need this. Cause see how it's all sticking together and forming like a ball of dough. That's what you want. So have that all done. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper so that it won't stick to this and I'll be able to easily transfer it over into my pie plate. I'm going to roll it up <clears throat> using my parchment paper just to make it a little easier to move it and transfer it over. So I'm going to put a little flour on the parchment like so. All right, now then, I'll take out my <coughs> dough. Ready to shape it and roll it out. <clears throat> Got little pieces of ice left over. Don't need those. All right, that was just to keep my water super cold. All right, now <clears throat> you don't want to over knead or stir your pie crust, um, even for short crust, because if you do, you start making the gluten stretchy inside of your flour and it'll make your crust harder. So you wanna flake your softer crust just enough to get it stick together. All right. And you're gonna roll it out. And then on this parchment paper, you can easily turn it. Ta-da! You can use the store-bought pie crusts if you want to, but they are never, ever as good as homemade crust. <clears throat> not ever, not once. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna let my flour <clears throat> fall off on there. I don't need any of my pie. And I'm gonna take it <clears throat> and rip it over like so. Peel off some parchment paper. Hello. See how easy that was? Now, I'm going to scoot it around just to make sure it's in there exactly how I want it. Like so. Oh, letting it fall down in there. Like that. <clears throat> now, you can take your rolling pin and roll it across and it'll cut off excess. Nice little trick. Clean it up, make it look pretty. Look how pretty that is. Okay, now, 
there's another step now. We're gonna have to bake it. Because for lemon meringue pie, you want a baked pie crust. So, before to bake a crust, there's a couple of steps that you need to do. First, <clears throat> you need to make little pricks all inside of it to help keep it from shrinking. So, just prick your little crust everywhere, like so. And then along the edge, just like this. All the way around. If you see any spots you think you need to get, get them. <clears throat> now, next step is I am going to cut out <clears throat> my same parchment that I just used. Okay, it can be bigger than your, your pie shell, the pie plate. You just want to kind of cut it into a circle because you don't need all that excess. And then, push it down in side and the pie shell. And then you can go to the store and you can spend like $8 or however much it costs on some of those blind bacon beans that are just like these little beads that you pour in there. But <clears throat> another trick that you can use is just to use some dry beans that you have laying around the house, which is what I'm gonna do. And that helps hold the shape <clears throat> of your pie crust so it doesn't shrink. All right, now, I'm gonna put it in my oven. When I do my meringue, I'll use my big oven, but for this part, I'm gonna use my small oven. I'll set some heat in the kitchen up twice. So you set it to 400 for about 15 minutes. <clears throat> and let it bake. And then when it comes out, we'll remove those dry beans and we'll remove the, uh, parchment paper and get that stuff out of the way and then we'll get our filling ready. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, y'all, our pie crust is done. As you can see, it turned out nice and golden brown. I just took it out, still hot. Look how pretty and flaky that is. You can see the little flakes. All right, so now we're gonna make our filling. So what you need for the filling for this lemon meringue pie is two cups of sugar two tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, cornstarch is stickier than flour, <clears throat> we need a pinch of salt, so mix all those up. Dry ingredients up real good. And then you need one and a half cups of water. So stir that in, making a liquid like mix combined in it. So don't don't pour it in real fast. You just want to pour it in slowly as you stir like this. And mix your cornstarch, sugar, and flour mixture up with the water like this. And then once you get it mixed pretty good, you can add the rest. Then the recipe says that you're going to cook this over medium high heat until thickened and bubbling. So there's medium high heat. So I'm going to cook it like this until it starts to get bubbly and starts to get thick. And just start like that. And right now it's white because we haven't added the stuff in that'll make it yellow yet. 
So once it gets thickened and bubbly, we'll be back. All right, y'all. So our mixture has gotten thickened and bubbly, as you can see. So now we cook it at, I turn the heat down to medium low and I cook it on a stove top for two minutes like this. And then I'm gonna add some of this mixture to my beaten egg yolks. So you're gonna need four eggs separated. So you'll need four egg yolks and four egg whites for your meringue. And um, once this is done, I'll take a cup of this and add it to that and mix it good with my whisk and then transfer the whole mixture back over here. And that's to keep your eggs from turning like a scrambled egg type curdly stuff inside of your, your filling. <clears throat> and then once we get done with that, then we'll add our one teaspoon of lemon extract and our one third cup of lemon juice and two tablespoons of butter or margarine. <clears throat> and we'll remove it from the heat. So this is almost done. It just has like a few more seconds. Now it says to beat the egg yolk slightly, which I already did, as you can see, they're beaten. Now I'm gonna take a cup of my hot mixture here, or approximately a cup, it doesn't have to be a whole cup. <clears throat> and I'm gonna pour it in to my egg whites, I mean egg yellows, like this. Mixing, 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 like so. Get all my stuff out of here, I don't want to waste any. Now, I've mixed this up. <clears throat> So now I can transfer it back. Mixture. And now my lemon meringue pie mixture is yellow. So what makes it actually be yellow is your egg yellows, your yolks. <clears throat> so you mix it like this. And we're going to bring it to a gentle boil and then cook it for two more minutes. So I'm going to turn the heat back up to get it boiling again. And you just keep stirring it so it doesn't stick to your pan. So, and it's getting thicker, it's about to start bubbling again. I can feel it with my spoon, wooden spoon as I'm stirring it. And you can hear it when I slide around, the little sound it makes from the fact it's about to start bubbling. See, here it goes, it's bubbling. So now I turn it on two minutes. <clears throat> I can turn my heat down just a little bit now that it's bubbling. And just cook and stir for two minutes and then we'll add our rest of our ingredients so we'll be back in two minutes all right y'all a two minutes timer just went off so now i'm going to turn the heat off on my filling so now i'm going to add my one teaspoon of lemon extract and you can use um to the, the lemon rind grated lemon rind of uh, lemon zest of, of a lemon instead if you want to but since I don't have any lemons around, I just use the lemon extract and it turns out just as good. I'm gonna add my lemon juice. And that juice would be, if you wanted to use fresh lemons, it would be like the juice of one to two lemons. You just want to get a third of a cup of lemon juice. So once you get that all mixed in together, real good. See how smooth and yummy that looks? 
Now, I'm gonna add my butter to the hot mixture. So it's about two tablespoons of butter or margarine. But I like to use real butter when I'm baking and cooking. Just has a good flavor. But you can definitely substitute margarine. I have done it in the past. Butter just has such a good flavor. It makes your stuff taste really good. That's why I like to use it. All right, and as you mix it and stir it in, your butter will melt. Once your butter is completely melted, <clears throat> then you're gonna take your filling and pour it into your prepared crust that we did earlier. So, fill it up, fill it up. Make sure you spread it around evenly on your pie crust. your meringue. So for my separated eggs, <clears throat> I have my four egg whites in my stand mixer. You can use a hand mixture, you just have to mix it and beat it a lot. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> get these going and you want to get them to about stiff peaks, really, like medium stiff. Not super, super stiff and not soft, a medium uh, peak. <clears throat> So I'm gonna let that meat mix up and heat up with air. It won't take that long. And to that, we're gonna add <clears throat> um, one third to one half cup sugar, slowly, a teaspoon of cream of tartar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. So once our egg whites get big and fluffy, then we'll come back and show you how to add that stuff to it slowly, and then we'll show you how to spread it over and make your pie real pretty. All right, y'all, our egg whites are done, um, beaten up, <clears throat> and they're kind of soft, medium, I mean, medium to stiff peaks, <clears throat> which is what I want. So now, I'm gonna turn my mixture back on, <clears throat> keep beating, and I'm gonna add my teaspoon of cream of tartar. <clears throat> now I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. And you need to do this immediately after your pie filling is done because you want to do your meringue and put it on top of the top filling. So now I'm gonna start adding my sugar. And I just add a little bit at a time. <coughs> and I'm adding half a cup to mine. Just because we like our meringue a little bit sweeter. But you add it real slow because if you add it all, dump it all in at once, your egg whites are going to deflate from the air that's in them and they'll just go flat. And you don't want that. So you do a little bit at a time. So now I'm going to take it and dollop it on top of my hot filling, like so. 
evenly spaced around. And you can do this pie with three eggs, but I like to use four because it'll make your meringue bigger and fluffier than if you just did three. It'll be a flatter, lower meringue if you only do three. <clears throat> so then the thing that you want to make sure that you do <clears throat> when you're putting meringue on one of these kind of uh, cream pies is you want to make sure that you seal the meringue to all of your pie edges. This keeps it from sweating and making that liquid juice that comes on top that you can sometimes see around the edges of homemade pies. It helps prevent that from happening as much <clears throat> when you seal it to the edge of your pie crust like so. It's like you're sealing all those juices in so they don't start sweating out. <clears throat> Now, make sure it's all even across the top, like so. All right, <clears throat> now you need a spoon again to make your dollops. <clears throat> so just take your spoon and gently pull up like this to make little dollops. All right, that's good enough. <coughs> so now we're gonna put it in our oven. It's almost done preheating. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. 400 degrees. And I'm gonna check it at eight minutes. And if the little tip thingies are turning brown and it's starting to get just a little tiny bit of brown around the edges, it's done. Because all you're doing with this is just kind of flash cooking the outside edge of your meringue. So, We'll set it for eight minutes <clears throat> and then we'll check it so we'll be back as soon as our little dollops are brown all right y'all our lemon meringue pie is done i just took it out of the oven so i left it in eight minutes was a little too long i took it out a little bit early but my tip still got a little bit darker so if you're doing it at home try five minutes and then increase the time from there if you need a little bit more time but overall it's perfect you'll see the little light brown shading of your meringue everywhere it's gonna be really good so what we got to do now anytime you make a cream pie is you have to let it cool down for at least two hours or so um, in order to cut it where it won't be runny in the middle so we're gonna let it sit here and cool for a couple hours and then we'll come back and we'll show y'all what it was like hey y'all welcome back so we've let our pie cool down quite a bit we're gonna go ahead and cut into it. We may be cutting into it just a little bit early, but it's mostly cooled down. So we're gonna just go ahead and try it and see what, what happens. Um, it'll taste good regardless. So let's cut into it. video on making lemon meringue pie, please like it, share it to others, and subscribe to my channel. Please go back and watch my other videos if you haven't seen them yet. And we'll see y'all next time in Nene's Texas Kitchen.